I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Please sit as we now have the tributes. Willing to offer help in any way he could to family, 
friends, or even total strangers. The girls at the gas station always felt safe because when they turned up to work early and saw their bodyguard there, they knew they would be okay. He would never go sleep without talking to God. He would always ask God to forgive him when he knew he did someone or something wrong. He would always tell me, D, pray, God is real here, don't stress it yourself. One time he was sick and he memorized the entire book of Job and it has always been his favorite in the Bible. Norman loved life, he loved his children, and he was so, so proud of all of us. For us, it was nothing but love and respect for this giant of a man. He loved his grandchildren, family, and friends. And we all know Norman loved girls. The first time he went to his house and left without something to eat or drink was the day he took him to the hospital. He would call me on in his B, you pass yet? Stop for something for the boy, me and my son. But he would always have fruit or drink or something to give me. He was sneaky too. He never got over the fact that I saw eating meat almost 40 years ago. And even the day before he got ill, I was there. He offered me a ham cutter. I sucked my teeth and he laughed. He said, I have some bread in the saucepan, you can have some too. I was taking out the bread to heat for him. And when I looked closer, there in the bottom of the saucepan hiding was more ham. He said, V, little ham can't kill you. And the man laughed for about half hour after. V, I was always his V. He never called me anything but V. For me, he was and always will be, sir, the legend. Be easy, sir, you've earned your rest. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, remember before you this day our brother Wendell. We thank you for giving him to us, family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn 427.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our oh Lord. Amen. Please sit for the first Bible reading. Good evening, everyone. Job 19, 27, 21 to 27. Job said, have pity on me. Have pity on me. O oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me, never satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were written down. O oh, that they were inscribed in a book. O oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The word of God. May I remain sitting as we sing Psalm 23, the Cremon Version. Second Bible reading. John 11, verses 21 to 27. Sorry. John 14, verses 1 to 16. So 6. Jesus said, 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, why well, have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to, I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, Father, except through me. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing him 223. I know that my Redeemer lives. I speak to him of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Part of the 25th verse of the 19th chapter of the book of Job. For I know that my Redeemer lives on this journey of life. Sometimes we encounter situations 
events that can really deflate us, that can bring us to our knees and have us wrestling with fear and anxiety, and perhaps asking the question if there is anyone there to respond to us in our time of crisis, if there is anyone who cares. And whenever we are found in such a situation, our faith becomes threatened. Our faith becomes threatened because, especially if we are trying our best to do the right things, and everything seems to be going wrong, we wonder what could be responsible for our situation. And we can give up hope, become frustrated, and throw our hands in the air and decide to let everything just happen. The writer, the book of Job, invites us to think, to consider, to recognize that God is in the midst of every single thing. And even when things seem to be going bad, there is still some good that can come out of it. For there's lessons, lessons that we can take from our experiences that can shape and redirect our approach to life, our thinking, and perhaps encourage and invite us to consider the relationships that we have with our family, with our friends, and with the people we interact all together. And see then if this whole notion of being lonely, being depressed, being frustrated will sort itself out. For in the book of Job we hear of this man Everything seemed to be going well. Righteous man. Have everything. And then encounters a rough patch. Losing everything. Every single thing and being brought to his knees. In fact, the evil one would have approached God and said, but he is only righteous and committed to this relationship because of what you have allowed him to achieve. But if he didn't have, no man, he would not remain faithful. God, seeing a different side of the equation, different side of Job, would say, look, you can test him, but don't harm him. Don't harm him. He loses every single thing. Brought to his knees. And there were times when he himself would have wondered what could be going wrong. What is responsible for this situation that I find myself in? The friends who would come hopefully to console him and to comfort him would come and find themselves in a speechless situation just there to stare nothing at all they can say but would always divert from what was happening and try to, to, to figure out within their own mind there's something that we don't know that he paying for there is something that we don't know that he is paying for so the friends will conspire among themselves and waste their time instead of encouraging, trying to figure out what possibly could have gone wrong. Then we take note also of that person in his life, that person who probably would have gone through the humps and the grumps of life with him, that person who would have benefited from his success. That person who was there to be called his wife. Who in wrestling now with 
the adverse situation that they found themselves in would give up hope, would release the faith in God, and even move to the point to say to him, man, look, just curse God and die. Get it over with. Frustration pushing her to the point where she could no longer, no longer identify or hold on to this faith to make this difference. We also hear of Job himself in the midst of his frustration entering into conversation and trying to, wait, to find out what really is going wrong. But through it all, being able to come to the realization, look, if it is God's will, and this is what is happening, the same God I believe and trust in is the same God who will see me through. And therefore, I will continue to hold my faith that God will not leave me nor forsake me. He will remain there with me and be bold enough to have the courage. And perhaps find the strength and the hope to boldly acclaim that I know that my Redeemer lives. Yes, whatever I'm going through, this too shall pass. And I know that my God the God who I serve and believe in will be there to console, perhaps to redirect and to renew the, uh, the life and the efforts in life. And so Job will remain faithful, remain faithful and allow nature to take its course. My friends, as we as a people go through our life, we too encounter situations that really, really will have us questioning our faith. Some people say that it is strange when good, when bad things happen to good people. And if bad things happen to good people, and it's a problem, why when bad things happen to bad people, it is still a problem? You see, my friends, the same God who allows is the same God who hinders. And as we encounter this journey and we have our personal experiences, I, I want to invite all of us to take everything in life as a season as a season and as we take everything in life even friendships we will recognize that the season will come to an end what is important now is what happens after the season has come to an end would we have stored up our harvest would we have been able to truly give an account of how we were able to nourish, to really respond, to really go through the season with our best efforts so as to prepare for when there is no more. And as we recognize that there is a season for everything, be rest assured. Everything includes relationships. People are put into our lives for a season and perhaps a particular reason. Yes, my friends, some people are there to test you and to push your, pa your patience. Some people are there to encourage you. Some people are there to just shower you with negativity. And whether they are there to test, to encourage, or to even pull you down, see it as a season, and be able to attest to God being present and giving, allowing the strength for you 
to decipher what can come out of the experience. And hopefully, with the experience, it will help us to prepare ourselves for when the same season come another time with a different individual, but with the same response. Yes, then we will be able to truly sometimes put things behind us. For after all, you see that eh? I passed through that already. And I don't need to fuss or fret about what happened in there. Because that too shall pass. A faith in God that says to us, do not allow negativity, do not allow distractions to move your focus from whatever you are planning or aiming to do, but keep focus and keep pressing on knowing that God will see you through it. And I want, to, I want us to really think about life and think about all of the challenges that we hear people face in life and the frustration that we hear coming out from people, man, I can't do this. I just complaining and fret, fretting and fussing. And the more we fuss and the more we fret, the things remain the same. And as we look round, in many instances, there are only few persons that we can truly identify with and call friends. F R I E N D. For the friend who is there when you have nothing and can be there with you when you have everything is the friend to keep. But the friend who is there when you have everything and when you have nothing will find the excuses is the ones to let go. I consider them and consider that friendship of as F-R-I hyphen E-N-D. And the hyphen is the struggles of life. And oh, how well it is for us to have such people in our lives. God help me to know my friends. For my enemies, I can deal with them. If it's an enemy, I ain't got to interact with you. But you see a friend that is not there when I need help and support, the disappointment that we have to wrestle and cope with can really deflate us and make us weaker for the cause than anything else. But when we know that we have support, when we know that our God puts people in our lives to be there for us, then we, through it all, can thank God for the experiences. Today as we gather before our mixed emotions to give God thanks for the life and witness of our departed brother Wendell, I want us to truly reflect on genuine relationships. Genuine relationships where love can make a big difference in the way we interact with each other. We're a love that brings with it sacrifice, commitment, and caring, sharing, can transform and encourage people along this path of life that come what may, even in the rainy conditions, they can still be able to stand the test of time and know that there's always someone there to respond to the need. Too many of our people in community, in this society of Barbados, after contributing greatly in one way or the next to country, to family, and to state, are left behind with not enough attention being paid to them. You know, it is like when you are on top of your game in your job, and especially if you have a position, Everybody know you. Retirement coming here. And when the retirement come, 
and you walk into the same place that you once was the boss, depending on what relationship you had with the staff that you would have left behind, will God help you? In other words, I'm saying, my friends, cherish the relationships that we have. Be good to people in all situations at all times. Be fair, upright, and just. That when you have left and you have transitioned, all that can be said, it was a joy to be in that person's company. As we give God thanks for the life of Wendell, there are perhaps some experiences and some memories that we would have shared of him that will frustrate us. There are some memories that will probably bring joy and laughter. There are some memories that will probably make us angry. But these memories all serve a purpose to take the lessons coming out of the memories and commit ourselves to doing better, to improving on whatever negativity we would have been able to see and to accentuate a positive attitude, knowing that the God we serve, the God we believe in, is there with us through it all. When we are able to do this, we can trust in God. Trust in God and know that whatever happens, all will be well. Joel and I used to sing a song. Through it all, you remember that one? Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned. Depend and trust on God's love. And I want you all, family members, through all of the experiences, through all of what is happening with this broken bond of love brought about by this thing called death, to recognize and accept that God is in the midst of everything. And in order for there to be a new life, there must be a death. And if this death occurs for new life, to happen, the new life now resides with you. To pick up the pieces, learn from the experiences, cherish the memories, and let all of them shape your response to relationships and to life going forward from here on in. We thank God for his life and witness, and we commend him to this God of love, praying that he will receive him more and more into his joyful embrace as we pray. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in this God of love in the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in the booklet. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Lord of the Virgin Mary, During the singing of hymn 496 496, a collection will be received for the upkeep of the cemetery.
your response to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, shall be hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn. And we commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may we be strengthened in our faith live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your son and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope. And fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Father of all, we pray to you for Wendell, and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And may he and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the parish family here at St. Margaret to extend sincere condolences to the family of our departed brother Wendell and assure you of the church's prayerful support in this your time of bereavement. Please remain standing for the commendation.
turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the records of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Wendell, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you, your infinite goodness, to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother Wendell, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Is it recorded? Yeah. Yeah, when you were. The music is recorded? Yeah. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound.
When peace like a river attendeth my way. When peace like a river attendeth my way.
when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord of his countenance upon him and give him peace. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Okay, sir. Good.